So let's start seeing what this looks like in action. Uh, so this is a simple uh, resistor in series with a capacitor. And this little line thing that you're seeing right there, that's just uh, saying a switch. So I close the switch and I allow the power source to charge the capacitor. I open the switch and I've broken the circuit. So nothing happens after that other than I can get a discharge on the capacitor. So let's think about this. For the time constant, remember we defined that as the tau equals the resistance times the capacitance. So for my time constant, what do I have? I have 100 times 10 to the third ohms times 2 times 10 to the negative 6 farads. So I'm just going to kind of do this in my head. I'm going to have 200 then times 10 to the negative 6 plus 3 minus 3, otherwise known as 1, 2, 3, point 0.2 tau, or point 0.2 seconds. So that's our tau. The maximum charge on the capacitor, well, that's nice because that hasn't changed. So remember we have our, our V equals, our potential equals the amount of charge a capacitor can hold divided by the capacitance. So let's just write that so we remember. So our Q divided by our charge, our capacitance. So the maximum charge on the capacitor then is just going to be V times C equals Q. Our voltage source is 12 volts. Our capacitance is 2 times 10 to the negative 6. So I'm going to end up with um, 24 micro coulombs. Cool. Then the maximum current and when does it flow? So the maximum current here, we know our charge. How do we relate that to current? Well, we actually don't. We're going to look at our resistor to figure out what the maximum current is. And so we can go V source equals I over R, so R E Q. Right? So rewriting that, I get my current is going to be my V source, my 12 volts, divided by my resistance, my 100 times 10 to the third ohms. That one I'm actually going to do on my calculator. 12 divided by 100. Oh well, made an interesting mistake and it, it didn't bother the calculator. And then times 10 to the 3. And I get, oh, I guess I should have done that in my head. Well, that's kind of embarrassing. So 0 0.12 amps. So that is the maximum. When is that? in the beginning, so just when we close the switch. Close the switch, or if I've let the capacitor charge, it's going to happen right around 5 tau when it's discharging. And then what is Q and I after T equals tau? So we're charging. We have these handy dandy. Equations, so let's pull them down. Put that over here. So Q is going to be equal, let's see, we have negative T to the tau, I'm sorry, T divided by tau. So that's going to be e to the negative 1. So that is when we have our point or 63.2 percent, right? So here is our one tau. I'm charging it. So it is going to be 0.632 times 
times our total Q, and I don't know why those E's just keep appearing, times our total Q, which we figured out here was 24 microcoulombs. So 24 times 0.632 will give us 15.2 microcoulombs. So I am slowly increasing as I'm charging it. I'm at 63% when I've done one time constant, which is this 0.2 seconds. So what about I? Current is going to start at a maximum and decrease. So I'm going to replace my Q with an I. It's going to be my I naught times. Now I'm decreasing, remember, at time t equals 0, this would be 1. So this is what I want to go with, t over tau. So that becomes also 63% of the current because, um, I'm yeah, no, 40% because I'm not minus. So E, let me confirm that number to the negative 1. Oh, calculator, you're not helpful. 36.7. So I not times 36.367. Let's see, we figured out I naught was 0.12, so 0.12 times our percentage is going to give us 0.044 amps. So there you have it. Now we've seen it in motion. And we can use this to start analyzing the more complex circuits. Now what's fun about these guys is that right now it's not going to make a whole lot of sense because we're doing DC but we're going to be into AC circuits here. And so some of the things that you're actually seeing are what we call high and low pass filters. So what they're used for, um, like in music analysis, if you want to create a soundtrack but filter out certain frequencies, or if you have a recording that you really like, but this annoying train whistle in the back you want to go away, you can pick that frequency and filter it out so your new recording won't have said whistle in the background. So what do we have going on here? We have, I think, let's see, we come out, what kind of loops do we have? I can go uh, this away, or my current can go all the way around. So what does that tell us as far as what's happening in this section versus this? Well, when I first come out, I have this one resistor in series, and then this resistor, this R2 and this R3 are in parallel with each other. So I think I'm going to deal with those first. I'm going to take R2 and R3, so I'll have 1 over 15 ohms, or 15 kilo ohms, plus 1 over 3 kilo ohms. That's a 3. 3 kilo ohms. And what's that going to give me? 4 by 15 plus 1 divided by 3 to the negative 1 gives me 2 and a half. 2 and a half ohms. Cool. Now you notice I'm ignoring the, the capacitor right now. I'm only focusing on my resistors. So one of the things I can do is kind of think about I've combined these two resistors together to come up with this two and a half ohms and that is now in series with this R1. So my REQ then for this circuit, there's the incredible E, is going to be this 12 plus this 2.5, so 14.5 ohms. Alright, so now I know my REQ. If I want to know the total current that this thing can have, what's going to happen. Um, when I first can get the maximum amount of current going, then I'm going to have V equals I R E Q or V divided by R E Q equals I. So then the 9, whoops, clear, clear, 9 divided by 14.5 
gives me 0.621 amps. So that's the maximum amount when I'm first charging. That is the total resistance that current that circuit's going to see. But now let's think about what happens when the capacitor is full, right? So when the capacitor is full, what loop can I take? Will this resistor do anything to the circuit anymore? The answer is no, because once this is full, there is no current coming down here. This becomes like a, a broken loop. I don't have anything in or out. The capacitor is full. So now, once that capacitor is charged, so let me make a note of that after capacitor is charged. What do I have? I have REQ is now these two resistors are in series. So now I have 27 kilo ohms. And this should be kilo ohms. Oops. That tells me I need to fix something here. Those amps are too high. 2.5 kilo ohms. So let's fix this before I go any further. 9 divided by 2.5 times 10 to the third. Changes that just a bit. To 3.6 milliamps. Phew, glad I caught that. All right. So for this one then, what's my steady state current? So this current is not steady state, not steady state. It's changing. After it's charged, my steady state current is then just our Ohm's law. So our 9 volts divided by our 27 times 10 to the third. 9 divided by 27. Down to the negative 3. Just one second. I want to double check that. Cooperating. There we go. So 3.33 microamps. So 10 to the negative 6. I want to double check this one. I feel like 9 divided by 2.5 times 10 to the third. Okay, no, that's correct. So not as much. The amperage has definitely decreased. It's, it's just a trickle, but it's still there, right? So just to remind yourself when you're looking at these things of what is actually physically happening in the circuit. So how much charge can go on the capacitor? Well, that's still just my um, B equals the charge over the capacitance, or my charge equals my B times my C. Steady state current on each resistor. So the only one that's going to have a steady state is those two. That's what we figured out here. So you have it. I'm going to leave the next one for the next video.